I have to press? Yeah. yeah, I guess I just I just ask because um, I completely agree. Like a lot of apologies lose themselves between uh, or lose themselves in the skeptical, right? They lose themselves in their own yeah. skeptical or spectacle, where they're like. You know, they get the lighting just right, they get in front of that camera, they get those tears jerking, they're like, Uh, I really screwed up, guys, you know, and, um, and it's stuff, and, and of course, people look at that and, and they think, like, oh, geez, you know, this feels fake, or, or they go out and they do something again, right, like, back in 2017, big example was, like, Logan Paul with the, the Japanese suicide forest, and, like, I guess, like, um, what, like, electrocuting, like, a dead rat or something? Um, uh, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not talking. Well, I am trying to talk your memory, but yeah. Um, so like, uh, it's stuff like that. Like early on, um, am I being chased by a fucking bat? What the fuck is that? Oh, oh, that is a real criminal. Oh. Um, I say the greatest apologies are short and concise, and I feel like, um, you know, where you take ownership. I think it starts to become a bad apology when you start, like, so say, like, um, ex-YouTuber is doing a public apology because it came out that he, you know, while drunk was, you know, pressuring girls and stuff, trying to pressure girls into, like, sex. Right. You know, and this can be any number of YouTube because so many have come out, right? <laughs> and he does a video, and at first he starts off good, where he's like, "This me being drunk is no excuse. You know, I was drinking. I should not have done it. I should have known better. I did know, like, you know, I did, you know. And then he starts going to, um, but I just, you know, I was drinking every night. I don't really recall having done this. Um, I would not have done this had I been sober, you know, like really starts leaning into like he was drunk, you know, that drinking was the issue and starts going, I'm going to go to rehab and I'm going to do this. And well, that's good though, right? I mean, it, but then it you, need, you need an action plan to be restorative. Him, though, no longer is about the victim. He starts, that's fair. He starts going, I'm going to rehab, and I, I found out through this that I have a drinking problem, and I have an issue. And it's fine to realize that, but now it's no longer about the victim and the people you pressured sexually while drunk to have sex with you. Now it's Completely a agree. Should, he, should, should someone donate? And I, I know this yeah. is going to sound facetious, but I really am curious. Like, should someone... Should someone who gives that apology, if they want to truly be restorative to the people that they've hurt and, and to others who have been in the same situation, should they donate to like like a like a sexual assault or harassment like like hotline yes, or I, like, I would be like program? I, yes, but then it, it, that in itself can be performative. You know, it really comes. Yeah, to... you know, and I completely agree with that too, actually, because again, it it, it sucks because it's it's such a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation when it's this spectacle, you know. Um, because anything that gets put on in front of the camera, I unfortunately like the spectacle of it outweighs like the sincerity of it, which which is like both a blessing and a curse because like of course people should be skeptical of spectacles. Yeah. But it's also like it means that like no one who ever does anything in front of a camera is ever really like take it like a little seriously you know it's like remember back when like the prankster youtubers of like 2015 2016 would donate to like homeless people on the street and that, that was like one of the few early things that like um h3 h3 got big for for like dogging on because it, it was it was performative and, and spectacle based right um a good a good chunk of the time because it was also just like not actually a structural solution right to just go up to a homeless man and give him like 50 dollars in front of a camera right that, that's not an actual uh, structural solution to be sustainable to the greater society of like homelessness totally agree um but it, it makes you wonder like geez like isn't there something about that that's like at least a little like kind of role model based because he's still giving out this message of like hey be kind to the homeless you know and like don't like think that you should just walk away and look at a person who's suffering without like trying to give them some sort of you know bestowing yeah. of some kind right but it's like no no man like because he recorded it it's like totally evil and wrong and it's like i completely understand that the spectacle of it is sus right like we can agree on that 
But I just, I'm curious about like the role model ship of it all. You know what I mean? Does that, does that really get lost in like in the spectacle? So here's the deal. Um, here's the deal, bot. Well, I'm just, I'm trying. To... This song is bopping. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to get to this very friggin' bush. Very friggin' bush. That sounds like a. You're coming up with cool names for like cocktails or. The very friggin' bush, dude. Um, so one of the things that makes an apology, I think, genuine, is not offering up excuses. Because I think the moment you start oh, sure. going, hey, I was drinking, or hey, I was, uh, high, or hey, I was doing this, uh, if it starts going into me feeling like I'm supposed to feel sorry for you and not the victim, it's already a bad apology. One of the things I appreciated about Logan's apology is that it was five minutes. It was clear, it was to the point, it was... Because you're right in a sense where if they say they're donating, you know... But here's the deal, the reason why people never believe when people say, Hey, I'm donating to, like, sexual harassment, I'm doing... Is they never show proof of... Do of uh, donate. Oh, oh, okay. See, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, oh no, my pick ass is string in it. But they never, they never sit there and they never show. Hey, um, they never show us any proof. We never see any proof whatsoever, right? Of like a, of a donation of any source, quite honestly. And so it's hard for people to, you know, it's hard for people to be like, oh, you change, because then they'll do the same behaviors, you know? Right, and so right. it's kind of, it's this yeah. whole, it's this whole deal that it it, 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 shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, hard and stuff, but I believe, you show proof of don donate, donating, you know, you show proof of, hey, so I'm paying, like, your therapy bills, I'm paying for, you know, like, here's X amount of money that, you know, you need so that you can heal. Like I, right, right. Like regardless of and, how and, and that, how financially yeah, that, that sets me back, you know, if someone is truly sorry about like, oh, I was drunk and I did this, so here's like here's enough money for to help you heal, regardless of how red and how much it puts me in the red or how much you know whatever. And that is a true like, and then also what helps is not falling into the same behavior patterns. Yeah. that they were doing and showing that they've changed like and and, and i think with that with, with that what happens with that is you have to kind of distance yourself i think from what you've done normally in the past like you have to if not you play a certain parties. video game or let's play that like you know is bringing out a certain element of your personality that's problematic i would just then i would like switch gears immediately you know uh, just in in my case you know like if you know if you're a gamer uh youtuber or just whatever right like in the case of like um like in the case of like logan paul like i know this is such an old example but like in the case of like suicide forest right like the thing, like if that was me you know like with that you just kind of want to distance yourself from that i think right like if, if you're like if you're a youtuber and you're like oh we're going you know my whole shtick is we i like to travel vlog in like you know crazy like stunty kinds of places that are like haunted and spooky and everything and then i really am caught for like you know not really like respecting the culture and actually being like super problematic i would be like whoa okay let me like just actually pick a whole new style because i think to me it would be it would be the style that ends up getting me to make these mistakes in the first place right and i'd be like oh okay you know stunty spooky travel vlogs are now like getting me in hot water i'm gonna get into cooking videos you know like well, that's just me i think that no, well, part of it is, is you, you know, you have to prove you change, you have to prove you're all about the victims. I think what happens with his apology videos, it's just, it just, you know, they make them about themselves. They, like, in case in point, you know, I bring up drinking because drinking is the most used excuse, I would say. 
Um, they'll be like, oh, I was drinking, I was drunk, I drink so, you know, I have an alcohol issue. And instead of like, hey, I need to stop going to less YouTube parties, or if I do go to these parties, you know, take a pic, you know, sh drink like orange juice or drink water or drink a seltzer, you know, try to find non-alcoholic options so I can decrease my chance of... Getting all these seeds, it's um, time to party! But you know, like, instead of them trying to find options to, like, limit the fact that, oh, when I drink, I become, like, this predator, I become this, you know, whatever, it, it, they Bro, keep I'm going to parties, party. and they'll keep partying, right. and they'll keep, like, you know, they'll keep doing these behaviors, and it's like, how do we know that this one party isn't going to lead to someone else coming out saying, Ex YouTuber assaulted, you know, or ex YouTuber did this to me, and it's like, it's completely they. I, you, I feel like also too, it's really easy to generally feel when someone's actually sorry about something versus someone being made to apologize to save face. Yeah. You know, like you can really tell an apology is to save their brand, their career. You know. Just based on, quite honestly, based on, you know, their, their body language, you know, if they're, if they're rambling going, you know, I was really drinking at this time and it's not an excuse, but, you know, I was, I think I, you know, I believe I have an addiction and Andrew's apology it's so he do, it doesn't feel genuine because he goes you know what they say is true i did you know do that but i have a real issue with you know alcohol and i'm going into rehab and i'm getting i'm going to therapy and i'm doing it made he started making i statements oh, and yeah. at that point the apology loses all meaning because you can tell us what you're going to do but he started, but when you start like making it about yourself and yeah. not about the countless women that you've like, especially with what he had done, like, you know, putting, taking like sexual, you know, assault and like taking a woman's hand and putting it down his pants and trying to, you know, or pressuring a woman into sex after her saying no, 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 no. And then her finally giving up because you won't stop leaving her alone. Like, instead of you sitting there and being like, this behavior, you know, I've called it out before, and yet I've done the exact same behavior. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's and what then he blames when it, gets it on that like, heavy. society and not knowing boundaries of, oh, men don't know, like, men aren't raised. And it's like, Okay, yes, but no one put a gun to your head to pressure these women. You did that all on your own. There wasn't a, like a gallop of guys, you know, going pressure her, pressure her, pressure her, pressure her. You were yeah, alone. Dude, do it. Yeah, like you were alone in the it's car. Amazing. You were alone in, in the apartment. Like no one but you did this. So don't blame society. Don't blame how men are raised. Don't blame alcohol. This was all you. And instead of acknowledging that fact, instead of facing the horrible acts you have done, you make it about yourself saying, I'm going to therapy. I'm going to look into rehab. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to look into out. Like you take all of the focus away from where it should be. And that's a terrible apology. Sure. Uh, well, I'm glad we had this talk. Um, I think I'll switch gears and let's ask about... Uh, we've been watching the Brandon Sanderson podcast. Yes, we have. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an inspiration for me because, like, I like to write. And I also, uh, you know, I'm writing a book and writing a series of books and uh, obviously uh, Brandon is, fa is an inspiration because he's he's he is very much a, a grind writer which I love because like I mean you know if you've kept up with Brandon Sanderson's channel at all you know that he's got these like four secret book projects or something it was called like the secret project 
Um, and funnily enough, as we talk about these apology videos, he actually came up with an apology video a while back, but it was a joke. It was him saying, like, I'm so sorry I haven't been doing this or that because I've been actually doing this. And he, like, has been working on, like, these, like, four books behind everyone's backs, and it's, like, it's like supposed to be, like, all tongue-in-cheek. And because um, people, of course, love his content, and it's, uh... I was watching a... Oh, I can do this if I'm over sluggish, maybe. I was watching a... Uh, he did a panel podcast episode where he was... Uh, I have a died. I am a dead. Alright, so I was watching this Brandon Sanderson podcast episode where he was saying that basically uh, it didn't take him until his like 8th or 13th book, he said, to feel like a mediocre writer, let alone like a, a, a good or a great one. And... Um, that's that is just uh, it's fascinating to me because it's it's actually kind of inspiring because you know I've been writing seriously for um, we'll say like 2015 uh, 2015 2016 and um, that is uh, let's see oh yeah we have to um, so we got two quests here. We got getting started and cultivating harvest of parsnip, which is the seeds I have. And then I'm still trying to find people, but I don't like that one. I'll, I'll just get I'll just get you to come on to do it. I don't know. Um, so it's a very interesting thing. Um, yeah, I've been I've been watching it every so often. And uh, you know, I guess you know, general question that just segue into what are some of your favorite podcasts that are both casual but also a little inspiring. It's so interesting because, like, I don't know, like, I, you know, we have Brandon, Brandon Sanderson, you know, um, I watch a podcast for a couple YouTubers, like Amanda the Jedi, Friendly Space Ninja, they have their own podcast, um, talking about YouTube videos, creative movie stuff, and it, it, it's super cool, they talk about other things as well. And I really like them. Um, Friendly Space Ninja, and I think Amanda the Jedi also have that link for their podcast. I can't remember what the podcast is called for, like, the life of me. <coughs> I used to like the Jenna and Julian podcast before Jenna left YouTube. Yeah. Um, I don't watch a lot of podcasts anymore. Um, I just watch long form con, which, you know, podcasts can be, but like, I sort of had just like done long, just watched like, you know, the people's profile videos on like historical medieval figures and. Oh, I love that. I love those. I love those. Um, I watch, you know, history videos in terms of like, you know, the earth and watching animal videos and, you know, I've, I've kind of just branched into, you know, it's so, it's so interesting because like. My taste, it's so funny because, like, I look back on what I used to watch, you know, on YouTube and how it's evolved over the years. And I remember getting onto YouTube and being super into, like, Smosh and, you know, shoes. Let's go get them shoes, you know, like... <laughs> oh, Liam Kyle Sullivan. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And Smosh, you know, Kel and, yeah, Kelly... Um, you know, Mark, PewDiePie, you know, like, and for a, for a second, I'm not proud of it, but I was, I was a kid watching him, let's, Shane Dawson, um, because oh, yeah, Shane Dawson yeah. used to do parody, like another YouTuber that he used to do, like, parody songs. Oh, um, that's, that's, that's nothing. I, I used to watch the real bad guy. Okay, well, hold on. <laughs> um, let's calm down. Like, you know, like, I, I watched Shane Dawson, I watched another guy who did parody songs. I remember when Shane Dawson, you know, had his movie Smile. You know, I, I, I look at that, and then I look into, then I transition to gameplay, you know, and ASMR. Um, because I can't smoke pot, so what really helps me calm down, kind of wind down and calm down is ASMR, especially if, like, you know, I have a really bad migraine because I have migraine issues. ASMR, especially on those days, you know, when I 
I'm falling asleep later in my head, you know, it's just I watch ASMR and ASMR means auditory sensory, um, uh, something, it, it, it's an auditory sensory thing where it, just, it helps you relax, essentially. Um, a lot of ASMR YouTubers have the full of what ASMR actually is, but I, I can't remember what M and R stand for, so you're gonna get a very abbreviated version from me. Um, M and R? Yeah, because it's auditory, sensory, something, something. Um, and so then it was gameplay and ASMR, and then, you know...